My man is clean, clean. But, no, no, no. I knew Brian was going to come dressed <laughs> so nice. And I'm like literally in a Barbie t-shirt from right. Target. Okay. I was like, this is not acceptable. Well, I did Uber or... Well, I did Urban Outfitters, and then in my Uber, I'm like, I don't know if I really like this shirt. Yeah, look I like that <laughs> shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Urban has got something now. In your artwork? Man. Oh, I'm, Honey. man, I'm an addict for math, and this is, like, connected to some, like, ancient geometry stuff. Right. And I promise you, I'll nerd out if you ask me too many yeah, questions. Yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Better rip, man. I told, Bri- I told Brian, though, I was like, he's got to look nice because... This personal brand that he's been building is oh, yeah. so like it's just so GQ like yeah. everything that you're doing, and I don't even know if Roger knows this, but like my original podcast I had like maybe a year ago, um, I took you to coffee, went to go get coffee, and I was like, I really want you to come on my podcast, mm-hmm. and like it didn't end up happening, but you've always been someone who like believed in me and supported me, and I think right after I left coffee with you mm-hmm. i went and recorded like a solo episode motivated oh my god <laughs> he pushed me to go do it and then i did the solo episode and it was so scary that's awesome i mean that's what that's how you grow you know it's kind of stepping out of that yeah. comfort zone and just doing the hard things and um you know it, i feel like we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to you know be perfect or the I- ideal version of ourselves but For sure you only get there through reps yeah so you know, go shoot the solo podcast. So what? You know, if it sucks, like, keep it moving. Go do another one. Go do another one. Like, that's the same with content. Like we were just talking about earlier. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, your content's good. Well, I don't think it's good compared to a lot of people that I look to. Of course. But you know, it's a lot better than when I started. And the only way I got better is just doing reps after reps after reps. And like, um, I think also a lot of times we think that people are paying to paying attention to us more than they really are. Yeah. And that's what I kind of try to remind myself, like. I value myself, but I'm not as important as I think I am. And like, you know, especially in this fast paced world where it's just like so much attention and people have attention spans of like four to five seconds. It's like they notice you for a second and then they forget about you. And so it's like, just go out there, do your thing, put in the reps, get better, do it for yourself. And, um, you know, start to progress over time. You could tell it's genuine. I feel like I'm I'm motivated. Like- <laughs> no, yeah, I, know. That's what I was just talking to him before we hit record because I was like, he's not just like putting these video- videos out and being like motivating, like yeah. he's practicing you mean what it. he's preaching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so cool to see just kind of how your career has transitioned mm-hmm. because when I first met with you, you were still kind of going really hard in the real estate game. Mm-hmm. And now you've put a little bit more focus on this like personal coaching fitness coaching and so I've got to kick it off with the intro yeah. we've got to welcome Brian Pollard to in the lobby podcast so much. Um, sure. you're a data-driven fitness coach mm-hmm. which I was giving him yeah. a hard time I, I want to like, know what this means yeah <laughs> yeah for sure well yeah thank you guys both uh, yeah. for having me I'm excited to be here um, you know, to kind of touch on the, the coaching business part, yeah, it's a health data-driven fitness coaching program. And, uh, you know, my word for this year and when I was really starting this business is optimization. Yeah. And really just becoming a better person holistically and becoming the most optimized versions of ourselves. And this mm-hmm. is really where the the essence of it all started. And, um, you know, I was telling her, you know, the ideal client avatar for me is like business owners and when you're running a business it's all data driven right and i feel like for a lot of the fitness industry with coaches and this is no jab at them i mean i'm supporting anyone who's out there to help other people get better for sure but i feel like it's a guessing game and i want to kind of take the guesswork out of the, the the picture and so the way we do things is um you know first we have blood work and then we use wearable technology like whoops um, and oil rings and things yeah. of that nature to continuously optimize because that allows us to see like where you are specifically. Because if you think about it, like let's say you have two people, the same gender, the same age, the same height, the same weight with the same goals, nine times out of 10. Same thing's not gonna work for all three. It's not gonna work, yeah. right? But, it, but a coach is gonna give you the same workout nutrition plan mm-hmm. and then you're gonna go through it for a couple of weeks and then they're gonna say, okay, well, I see you're not losing as much weight as you thought you could. So let's try to guess and, and make some changes on this side. But if I come to you and like I'm looking at your blood work, 48 different biomarkers down to the DNA, I'm looking at your, uh, you know, technology as far as like your sleep, your strain, your recovery, your heart rate, all these different metrics, Mm -hmm. then I can really dive in and see what the heck um, is going on and make the proper adjustments, you know, based off of that. And that's kind of where it all came from. And it's 
it's a work in progress with any business, you know, it's figuring out what works and what doesn't, but at least with the way that I'm doing it, I'm able to get an individualized picture on each client um, to make the best decision moving forward. I mean, data is important, and for you to go against the grain or status quo of what people are doing in the fitness industry, mm -hmm. I'm sure that that's hard in its own respect, sure. right? Yeah. But you could tell, again, you hear you hear that passion that you have. You hear the investment that you have into not only just what you're doing, but these are people's lives. Like, sure. you're messing with their blood work, you're messing with their sleep. Mm -hmm. You are really tracking and taking a look at these things to make, like, appropriate decisions for them to adjust their life to be a better person uh, right so you you hear that and that's that's cool honestly and it all started with like my personal transformation and it's like i've been on a six-year journey of this and you know taking it back to my la days like i'm from virginia born and raised but i hear that sigh once, once <laughs> yeah, you offer that sigh yeah, the six-year journey you're yeah, like it's it's, I, it's hard man <laughs> it's, hard. it's super hard man it's super hard but i was very lost um, yeah in la you know just to be transparent with you guys and i hear you it's like deep, deep, deep in a dark hole. And I'm like, mm -hmm. how can I get out? And the only thing that I knew was like fitness. And you. like I said, it's been an up and down journey for the last six years, but we're trending upwards for sure. And, um, you know, like I said, bringing it back, it's like, I just want to become optimized. You know, like a, a lot of people was like, oh, let's lose 30 pounds in 30 days, or, you know, let's do this and, and that. And for me, it's like, I just want to be a better person overall. Yeah. And that's mentally, physically, emotionally, like, um, in business and our relationships and like really just optimize ourselves and you know I always tell my friends like we got this one life like let's just let's, let's maximize it, it to the absolute maximum you know it's like and the only way we, that we can actually maximize our life is by being healthy yeah right? and taking our fitness serious and like caring about ourselves and that's you know I feel like uh, you know fitness is one of the best forms of like self-respect when you really take care of your bodies and um, you know, also like, I see these people, you know, like that have these families and like, oh, I would do anything for my kids. You know, I would do anything for my family. Yeah, but will you go to the gym? Mm -hmm. You know, will you get healthy? And this is not taking a job. This is not negative. This is just reality. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's really like take a look. Like, what would you really do for your family? And, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have found this purpose and passion and in the fitness industry. And um, I'm excited for the future. And this is like something I'll do for the next 60 years of my life. And, yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're slowly starting and I'm excited to see where it goes. And I think me being on my journey, you say something that I really, I, w I, w I would hope it sounds like either you're already saying it or if there's a way you can try to like package it in your own way. Cause you say it so like in such a healthy way, mm -hmm. it's like comparison is a thief of joy. hundred percent. And you're really like being intentional in each conversation and each effort and each thing you're doing mm -hmm. and it's it's remarkable it's admirable mm -hmm. honestly thank you so it is very honestly like it's a pleasure to meet you yeah, um absolutely. and also to see a, a, another gentleman of color on the journey yeah, and man. doing what doing your thing yeah. and in multiple different uh arenas and avenues of work like absolutely. um it's truly an exciting time to have you on the podcast yeah thank you and i'll speak on that comparison thing i think absolutely it's the it's the thief of joy and it's, yeah it's just so prevalent in our day and age. Everything, man, it's just everything. always comparing. I mean, I catch myself daily comparing it. But at the end of the day, like everybody's on their own journey and that's, you can almost take pride in that. Yeah. And that takes some of the pressure off. And on this comparison thing, you know, I got a couple of thoughts is, um, you know, we're always, you know, not necessarily in comparison, but just on the growth in life is that we're always looking, once we get here, then we'll be happy sure right mm -hmm. and that can be with comparison like if i was just like this guy if i just had his talents if i just had his hair right if i just mm -hmm. had his height or for women especially if i just look like her this that and the other um we're always like if i was here then i will be happy right yeah and that's just such a toxic thing to you know bring on yourself there's so much pressure in that and if we can alleviate that by for example a lot of people they don't want a million dollars they want the feeling that they think a million dollars is going to bring them yeah. Right? right. They don't care about being six four That's or so good. or having good. blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> right. They just think that that feeling is going to make them happier. Yeah. Right. So if we can walk in that space and that feeling mm -hmm. of what we think that thing is is going to bring us, it takes the pressure off. And so yeah. that's what I've really been learning. Like over the last six months, like I wake up every day, I feel like I'm the most successful, you know, bad to the bone fitness coach, changing people's lives, optimizing people's lives, running a business that's service first that's really getting results that's caring about the people i'm an amazing husband i'm an amazing father i have great friends i'm a great friend and i live in that moment despite it all having played out yet yeah and that takes the pressure off and that's all i can do because i feel it 
I yeah. feel it to the core. Like I'm, I'm there, right? And it's just not up to me um, to say how or when that happens. But it's up to me to have that feeling before it happens. Well, I'll tell you for oh, the audience, man. it's infectious. Like, it's I'm like, um, do I, I have hear a you TED now, talk? Okay. That, <laughs> can I attend it, please? <laughs> but also, you just made me think of a conversation I had with my mom today, and I'm sure this probably gets brought up with like your female clients. Mm -hmm. Do you know what Ozempic is? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's like I work out all the time, like I'm eating healthy, and I was like looking at like some of the celebrities who have like lost a lot of weight recently. Taking Ozempic. <laughs> yes. And and then I start, you start getting in your own head of like yeah. comparison, right? Like I'm like, maybe I should take that. Like mm -hmm. I want to look like them. And it's such a thief of joy. Mm -hmm. So you just reiterating that to me, I'm like, that just meant so much to me just hearing that come out of your mouth, yeah. you know? Sure. So, yeah. and we were talking about too, like how different it looks being a fitness coach with like female clients versus male clients mm -hmm. oh, and sure. just like their bodies are so different mm -hmm. hormones are so different mm -hmm. and you were saying that maybe sometimes your female clients are a little bit easier to train mm -hmm. than your male clients yeah why is that yeah i would i definitely agree it's it's a very different spectrum um and i don't know the word to use but selfishly i would prefer to work with men simply because i've don't feel authoritative enough to speak on a woman's behalf because I'm not in her body. I right? hear you, man. So I don't go through those things. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I can't learn, do the research, talk to women, you know, become educated in the in the space, especially around hormones and, and cycles and so forth. So forth. Um, but yeah, like we were saying earlier, you know, it is a different dynamic with with men and women. And I have probably split split half female, half male clients at this point. And um, you know, my female clients, uh, Britley is one of them, and she's just absolutely amazing. She shows up, to, shows up to work. She asks the right questions. She said, what can I do? I say, hey, this is what we got to do. Like, this is a nine-month, 12-month journey for you. For sure. Setting the expectations. She's like, okay, you know, like, I'll just follow the script. And that's what we call it. You just follow the script or follow the recipe, right? And, um, you know, it's no bash on men, just men, you know, just, you know, you're working with some alpha guys. It's like, is this really the best course of action? For sure. And I think... Um, you know, not in a negative space, but a little bit of ego gets involved. You got to play it, you it's... know, and <laughs> and I get it. I yeah. get it. And, you know, like I work with some dogs and they want to be they want to be dogs. And um, it's, it's just a balancing act. Right. And, you know, as I'm building this business, I'm really like seeing who I like to work with most and who I don't like to work with most. So I can really niche down and be like, this is a specific person I want to work with every day and just grow in that. And I think that's really where growth comes in business is for, like riches are in the niches is what they yeah. what they say. And um you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing it out, uh, but um, yeah, there is there is a little bit of a difference. But again, I just like to help, you know, as many people as I can. And I guess if, just for me, because like you guys have a relationship that one, this it, it seems very, very healthy and motivating. And I'm outside looking in and I'm just like <laughs> this. This dude's got me pumped up. I like, know. Right. It, so motivating. Yes, it is a very positive experience. But uh, where are you from? Like, where's home? Because you said yeah. Virginia. Yeah. I'm an East Coast guy myself. Okay. And then, like, what got you into fitness? Yeah. Because, like, I, I hear where you are present present day, the six-year journey to mm -hmm. get there. Mm -hmm. That's not easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a it's a work in progress every day. You're waking up with that mind state. Mm -hmm. that the, the riches are in the niches. That's dope. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I don't know if I've heard it that way, but I like that. Yeah. And I'm going to steal that. For sure. But I do need to understand, like, for you to be so connected on this like it, the, the, this level of journey for other people too right mm -hmm. like what got you so connected or focusing on fitness yeah that's a that's a great question and i think it's just been the evolution of like life and yeah you know i wish i could well i can't pinpoint a couple sure you know, life-changing moments that really push the dial but i think it's you know from the time i grew up i'm, I'm from lynchburg virginia a little small country town and yeah. i think that um you know, a lot of my friends and family are still there and I love them to death, but I was always the type like, I, I gotta get out. Yeah. There's just so much more in life. And that's just what I wanna really preach to people. It's just so much out there. We have this one little life and like we all think like we're gonna live till we're 80, 90, 100 years old. And that's just like very selfish to think that we're afforded that much time. And it's, you know, I'm saying this in a positive manner. It's like, sure. let's really take advantage of the time that we do have and make the biggest change that we can have. And I think that starts with ourselves. Like, how can you pour into other people if you don't fill your cup up first, yeah. right? And so I played sports my whole life growing up. I unfortunately got hurt playing football my junior year of high school. So that 
ended any uh, collegiate um, activity. Sure, yeah. yeah. And so I was in the fitness. You know, the knee was bothering me, so I wasn't. Yeah, I'm surprised. That you, I thought you played some college. Sports. You, got, you got to quite the build on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I wish, but yeah. I'm, I'm also grateful for the path that I did take. For sure, for um, sure. And so, you know, college, I worked out a little bit here and there. And then my senior year, I was just really focused on school. I was, wasn't at the gym. I was, you know, not confident in myself and my body. I wasn't as healthy as I know I could be. I moved to L.A. for, for a girl at the time. And I get caught up in the party scene. I'm just partying every weekend, yeah. going through the motions. Like I said, I was just in this deep, dark hole. And um, it got to a point where <laughs> I have a picture, and I think it's probably on my Instagram somewhere. It's like um, the side by side, and I took the picture, and it was on Snapchat back when people use Snapchat. Sure. People still do. I don't, <laughs> I don't really use it anymore. But um, the title was Day One. Yeah. And I was like, I woke up, I was just sick of being in that space mediocre yeah you know, really just 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 sick of like not taking advantage of this beautiful like life that god has given me right and so i was like this is day one and from that day like i said it's been a been a roller coaster of course i think success is not linear it's definitely uh it definitely has some some highs and lows but sure. from that day forward i just made up in my mind like from this day forward like i'm going to prioritize you know my health and my fitness so that i can bring into this world the most that i physically and and, and emotionally can and so that's kind of really where it all started for me and then I don't even mean to ask too much because I feel like I'm just so excited to one thank you for the introduction and you being here on the episode but now I'm like do you explain that story every time you get a new client or do they even care to ask or do they just they get that experience right like uh not every time I've been reluctant to be as like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Vocal or yeah. open or because it can be intimidating. It is intimidating, yeah. and it's like a man. It's like a little bit embarrassing, I would say, to sure. say that I was never like always at the top of my game. Yeah, but I think a lot of people can relate to it, and that's really what inspires me today. Is just help the Brian from a year ago, yeah. six months ago, from six years ago, right? And I feel like, you know, like in order to be a leader you just have to be one step ahead of the person you're leading yeah and so all i'm doing is taking the skills and the mindset and the things that i've learned over this last six years of what's worked for me what hasn't worked for me and i'm just handing it on a plate to to my clients and awesome. i'm like this is what i know this is what's worked for me and got me this far <laughs> yeah it's, it's got me this far and i'm still working I'm yeah still in progress but as i grow you're going to grow with me right yeah. and we're going to do this thing together and i think it just that's a cool. lot of it comes to like our mentality and that's really what i've been focusing on most like recently like i've been at the top of my fitness game but like still had a weak mind and so like i'm just really trying to strengthen the mind so much that you almost become unbreakable and you know that's you know i'm sure you're gonna ask about this later but that's kind of where the 12 marathons in 12 months uh you know came from it's like what goal can I set for myself that is so big and so scary that I have to practice day in, day in, week in, week out, month in, month out for 12 months, right? Yeah. If I can do this for 12 months and then succeed at the end of the year, it's the impossible for me to not have the mental fortitude, but also the self-confidence in myself that I can do anything I put my mind to, right? Because self-confidence doesn't come from standing in the mirror and saying affirmations to yourself or writing in your journal, your, your gratitude, all that stuff's important. From betting on yourself. Yeah, but it's making promises and then keeping them to ourselves. Mm -hmm. How many times do we say that we're gonna do something and then don't do it? Yeah. Like even little things like, I'm gonna go to the gym today and then you don't go. And then that's subconsciously programming you to say, you know, it's okay to lie to yourself. I'm gonna read this book. We get halfway through and quit, you know? And so to make a goal, like for me, like, that it was that intensive for that amount of time. I think, you know, when I get to the end of the year, like I'll be really like self-confident and proud of myself that like I really can do anything. And that's just gonna reflect again in my business and my relationships and how I can serve uh, my clients and friends. That's yeah. awesome. I always talk about that because as you were saying, life, go life goes by so fast, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you're showing up every day being consistent, it's like all of a sudden you'll wake up and you'll have achieved your goals because mm -hmm. you were so consistent, you know, yeah. along the way. Um, so it's so, ins and I think honestly, Brian, why I resonated you with you so much when I first met you was you were telling me about your experiences in LA and that you hadn't always been at the top and you'd worked hard to become this version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think so many people can relate to that because mm -hmm. there's been so many times I'm in these dark 
depths of my own life. Mm -hmm. And I think for me personally, the one thing that's always pulled me out is like fitness. Mm -hmm. Because anytime I get in the gym, I watch my mental health shift so much. And I know you're in the gym. Um, Yeah every day every day I can't go without it (laughs) yeah and I I honestly have a hard time understanding how people function without working out Mm -hmm. at all you Mm -hmm. know because I feel like it affects your mental health so much so yeah and I feel like just everything you're doing for your clients you're really advocating for both male and females mental health Mm -hmm. health and their like fitness journey yeah And I think like people don't realize like just you getting up and again, like making that commitment to yourself, I'm going to go to the gym and just going there. You may not have to have like the most elitist workout, but just getting there, Mm -hmm. that means so much to your day, so much to your circadian rhythm. It's, it's, it's incredible not to cut you off. No. Yeah. It's like, that's what I preach. It's like, we just have to start, start. Yeah. Really. You just have to start. And this, like for me, like I'm so grateful for my friends and my mentors. It's like, for the, even for the business, it was paralysis analysis. Like, mm-hmm. just take the first step with content. Just post the first post, right? Yeah. Like, Mr. Beast, he's the best content creator yeah. ever. It's insane. And he's like, <laughs> you can't even judge your content until you have a thousand posts, yeah. right? You might not feel like going to the gym, but get up and just drive to the gym. Walk in there, take a lap, stretch, and then come home. But just getting that in that motion. But like you said, fitness definitely uh, helps you mentally. I mean, it releases endorphins, and there's so many benefits to, to fitness. And... Um, you were saying something earlier I wanted to allude to, but, um, you know, just creating that discipline, like there's so much freedom in discipline, mm-hmm. right? People think that discipline restricts you. Absolutely like Discipline not. creates that freedom because you're no longer, uh, you know, for lack of better words, a slave to your, des- to your desires and your, and your wants, right? You're no longer just a victim of, uh, every little thing, right? You just don't give in to everything, right? If you want more time you have to have more time discipline more time management if you want more um better results in the gym you have to have more you know discipline that if you want more financial uh success you have to have more discipline with your finances it's just they just go hand in hand freedom and discipline and one more thing i'll add is um you know in the world of fitness and just in life like i always encourage people to do hard stuff oh, yeah. right and i was listening to an andrew huberman podcast it was with david goggins and i'm not a neuroscientist but he was explaining that there's these studies that have been done where there's a part in your brain that is responsible for willpower sure and the way that it grows is neuroplastic or however the neuroplasticity word, neuroplasticity yeah. so it, it can grow and it can shrink and the way to grow it is to wake up and do hard stuff now mm-hmm. this is like that can look like anything to anybody that can be just going to the gym and doing a 10 minute workout or it can be running a marathon every month right but doing those hard things over and over and over again Mm -hmm. he says that increases your willpower or better yet your will to live that's awesome yeah that's awesome i think a lot of times like we almost are so comfortable sitting in complacency Mm -hmm. and it's like doing anything that's hard and is going to move you towards your goals is going to be a little bit uncomfortable yeah and it's so easy just to like sit at home on your sofa with a throw blanket and be comfy cozy Mm -hmm. it's really uncomfortable to get up at 5 a.m when it's cold outside and go to the gym Mm -hmm. and so I was telling Roger this the other day because we've been really busy working on the podcast Mm -hmm. and I'll get really stressed Mm -hmm. and I'll tell him this is good though because we're not sitting on in our comfort zones any longer when you're stressed and uncomfortable it's usually because you're pushing yourself towards something and I mean I see your post like you're up at the crack of dawn so I can only think that you have like a set of routines probably like a morning routine I don't know if you have an evening routine Mm -hmm. but I want to know what someone like you what your day looks like when you first get out of bed yeah yeah of course uh it's pretty systematic for me uh at this point in my life it's almost the same day every day yeah um but yeah, we wake up, you know, first thing I do is pray. Um, that's super important to me. And then I practice some breath work, 60 seconds, um, which really just gets the, uh, you know, your your nervous system regulated, mm-hmm. right? And then um, and then we start the day, you know, uh, some meditation with the breath work, along with the breath work, and really awesome. just um, framing the mind because... How long I, do you meditate? Again, you know, five, 10 minutes, okay. it kind of just depends. Yeah. Um, so I actually have a, a breathwork coach, Brittley, one of my clients. And okay. cool. so she sends me a, a breathwork slash meditation, um, self-guided. That's awesome. And so, you know, 
just getting my head in that space because a lot of the actions that we do like are funded by our subconscious mm -hmm. right and what i used to do and what really was a disadvantage for myself is i'd wake up and first thing i would do is get on my phone oh yeah scrolling. that's where that comparison comes Guilty. in yeah <laughs> and it just it's just uh the easiest way to like not have a good day because you're already first thing in the morning comparisons you're, and you're and you're rushing yeah. right and you're just getting that little dopamine hit like every mm -hmm. two seconds scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and then your whole day goes through that and you feel like you're behind you feel like you're rushed you feel like you're not doing enough and all these negative connotations come with that and so what i've done is like no phone for the first hour when i wake up love it you know I, I like i said i wake up i pray i do my breath work i do my meditation i take a cold shower you know i stretch get my body moving and then i start my day i think right? the hardest thing too is when you do that people can take you as rude and you're like wait I'm not being rude like I'm like I just can't be on this phone that first hour 100% I, yeah. think, it's, I think it's boundaries though too because yeah, like, for you sure. tell for the sure. people in your life like hey I never answer my phone until after 10 a.m. I yeah. think they respect it 100% yeah. yeah people feel like with with these phones is that you they have automatic access to you absolutely not yes. you know? <laughs> and I tell my clients like you got 24 7 access to me right yeah but there's boundaries to it you know and I'll get to the message when I get to it there's nothing that pressing in my life or other people's lives that yeah. can't wait an hour yeah. right and if it if it can't call me right yeah. we, we can address that but <laughs> and it's not like i'm gonna ignore anybody yeah. like i'm no. gonna we're all gonna do yeah, our best some people are out. so annoying they'll like hit the question mark <laughs> they'll hit the exclamation i'm like yeah. can you give me like five minutes yeah <laughs> yeah and it's 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 you know it's sad but it's you know again it comes back to the phones it's just people think that they can have yeah. access to sure. you and that really like takes away from how you're able to show up for other people. You know, if you're just giving everybody your unlimited attention and access to you, it just really clouds like how you're able to um, carry yourself and, and again, you know, pour into other people. Um, and then for the night routine, um, again, no phone an hour before bed. Awesome. Um, and one thing I ask myself every night is what went well today? I think uh, what I used to do is like, what could I have done better today? Yep. But I no longer focus on the negatives, it's just the positives. What went well today? I write out a list, I think about it, and then um, you know, I think for me, like when I'm sleeping, I'm subconsciously like, the last thing I think about is all the positives that happened throughout the day. And so like I'm sleeping on it, I'm subconsciously like rewiring my brain to like think positive, 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 positive. And then I wake up in the morning positive because I'm not thinking about, oh, I didn't do this, this, and this today. Sure. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I'm so grateful for another day. Let's have another day like we did yesterday. Um, and that just kind of sets the tone for the day when we're already waking up in that uh, positive uh, framework. That's awesome. I, th I know I'm definitely guilty of that negative thought at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's motivation. Like for me, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. So I know that if I can ask myself that question, like, hey, what did I not do well today? Or mm -hmm. like, what can I get improve on? Mm -hmm. um, it's always been a driving force for me. And mm -hmm. that is, you, you bring up such a good point. Mm -hmm that it's the end of my day mm -hmm. and, and I really should adjust that to be positive for sure because I think, I think it's important to have those conversations yeah oh I do what, yeah. what, what didn't go right but like you, you have to take yeah. a, a, a temperature gauge on life we have to be realistic yeah. but you know at the end of the day it's like let's put the phones away let's you know imagine like scrolling for the last hour in bed and then the last thing you see is like a girl or a guy you wish you were like and then you go to sleep subconsciously you're not conscious there. about it subconscious is there yeah it's there and then you wake up and do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again how can you not just be a nervous system wreck of like yeah. in this comparison trap really mm -hmm. well it's like you're they say that you your mind doesn't know what's real or not sometimes yeah. so then it's like looking at social media or like watching a lot of tv it's like taking away from like the reality of your internal world kind mm. of yeah and then the other thing i think about too is these routines are like so important. Like I love what you're saying. Like do you journal too mm -hmm. or like, okay. Yeah. What I feel like is hard is if you're dating, trying to bring someone in and then still keeping those routines, right? As you're trying to date someone else, like, no, sorry, honey. Like, yeah. you know, I don't answer my phone past this time or I've got to go work out in the morning. I'm sorry, I'm not going to lay in bed and snuggle you. Mm -hmm. I find that discipline becomes a little bit harder when you add someone else in your okay. life. So I don't, are you, are you single? Are you dating? I'm single, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm beginning to open the door to dating. I haven't for a while, um, just because it was really like selfishly. Self love. Yeah, I just had to. Awesome. Um, you know, how how can I ask for a woman to bring me all these attributes when I can't even show up for myself? Sure. 
And I feel like that's just not a recipe for a healthy relationship. And so I had a lot of things that I needed to work on and I'm still working on, of course, but um, you know, I kind of felt with, with dating, like for me, it's like, I think about it. Um, I expect a lot, you know, and I feel like I'm not to the level that I need to be to ask for that. But I think that there's a balance to that because we're gonna grow at least most of us, I hope, sure. for, for the rest of our lives, right? So we're not ever going to be at that top level, you know? And if we wait till we're at that top level, again, the goalpost moves and moves and moves and we'll never be ready for a relationship. Um, so now- You're going to be alone by yourself <laughs> yeah, for a yeah. long time. 100%. <laughs> good point. 100%. <laughs> and so I've kind of come to the grips of like, okay, I'm in, I'm in a good space. Like, you know, the business is making money. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm healthy mentally, emotionally. Um, I'm healed from a lot of things. And so now I'm starting to open the door um, but it definitely brings a, a, a level of distraction, for lack of better words, when you do bring that partner into um, into the field. But that's why I think it's super important to pick the right partner. And I think people get lonely and impatient, so they just bring in somebody to fill that void because they're in, not in the best sp space. Yeah. And that's where you know we see all these divorce rates like what is it 50 percent of people that get married get divorced yeah it may even be higher yeah. honestly and it's like we're just trying to have somebody at least this is the way i look at it to fill the void that we have to fix on our own and i think a lot of people are afraid to fall in love right mm -hmm. like falling in love takes time yeah everybody wants to fall in love fast mm -hmm. and there's a difference in that right like you could have somebody fill that seat mm -hmm. fast mm -hmm. but to fall in love that's a process yeah and it does take that discipline that you bring up, but discipline creates distance. Mm -hmm. And it, the wrong person can take that as counter cyclical mm -hmm. and it goes against the grain versus the right person is like, that's more attractive to me mm -hmm. because I know that you're focused and you're healthy and you're grounded mm -hmm. and you're gonna be able to bring more value to me mm -hmm. when we are together. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine like what that looks like, Yeah. but you, I, th I think you just keep both of you, honestly, uh, this is all just a very healthy conversation and you're offering some good jewels around this. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine you dating someone who like wasn't living like a healthy lifestyle yeah. and like working out because it's like what, this sounds bad, but it's like, what's the value add? Mm -hmm. If you're adding, it's <laughs> yeah. like, you know. It's almost like they're getting free coaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is unfair to you. Yeah. Right, right. I think yeah. I, I've dated a few guys where they were pretty fit and I was like, this is good because I'll learn how to work out now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind offering my expertise, but yeah, like you said, like it's important to find uh, a partner with shared values. Yeah. And if I feel like I'm just dragging you along, um, that's not helping anybody, yeah. right? And so, yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, into fitness and into health and um, that way we can complement each other. And I don't feel like, like I said, I'm dragging you along. So that's super important. For awesome. sure. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, like, I'm just so in awe of you kind of um, hearing you say that um, as a man that you like have taken the time to like work on yourself like I have so much respect for it because mm -hmm. um, I've told you this before I really look at you as like a high value man someone who's like really pouring into himself mm -hmm. physically mentally financially working on a business so I'm like you know if you do start dating and you're looking for that person what kind of characteristics do you look for in a woman or, you know, what's inspiring to you in someone that you're like looking at dating? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think first and foremost, it's just a godly woman, like a God fearing yeah. woman. That's super important to me. I think, um, you know, as I'm growing in my relationship with God, which is, you know, something I take in as important, um, you know, I want my wife to, to be too. And that's just going to trickle the values of how she, um, treats me, how she treats our family, how she treats our kids, how she treats herself. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two is family. Family is important to me. Um, and so, you know, I definitely love a woman that uh, prioritizes family. Do you have relatives? Um, I do have relatives. Okay. I don't have any siblings, but I have relatives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, I guess, sorry, siblings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry. No, no. Siblings. Are you an only child? I am. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, adopted by my grandparents. Okay, cool. Um, so He's like, yeah, I have okay. relatives, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I do have relatives, but no siblings. That's on me. I'm sorry. No, no, no yeah. worries. It's still the family dynamic, you know, especially uh, I think as the world is moving, there's less importance on family and more importance on like self and you know everybody wants to be a boss and this that and the of other and, um the way that i view things is i want 
the my wife and the mother of my children to put family over everything mm -hmm. except right. God, of course. Um, you know, shared values. We talked about that. Um, support is super important. I mean, entrepreneurship is hard, and yeah. as you said, discipline causes distance. Um, you know, if she is always looking at me like, "Oh, you're not devoted to me enough because I'm growing my business," like that just creates a, a stress that. I just don't have the room for. And nice. so it's like, I'm doing this for us, yeah. right? I'm doing this for us. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take care of our family. I'm gonna take care of everything. But this is the where I'm at in my life right now. And it's not always gonna be like this, but I'm in the growth entrepreneurial phase of my life. And um, if I don't feel that support, you know, it's like, you know, you're just slowing me down for, yeah. for lack of better words. Um, also, I think loyalty is very important. I think it's extremely important how you're partner speaks about you in a room that you're not in absolutely. especially to their friends absolutely mm. and i think people overlook that a little bit because you know you know girls and guys mm -hmm. you know we have a problem in our relationship we love to go back and tell our friends yeah i, and, and, I never do it and, i never do it and it's like people don't realize that the damage that's causing because now not only are your friends looking at your partner like they're not worth a darn mm -hmm. you know it's like also creating a, a distrust it's like this is our business, you know, yeah. this, is, this is our relationship. Let's let's hash things out. Like, I'll never go disrespect my partner to my friends. Yeah. And I think that's just a part of a loyalty piece is how they're showing up in a room for you. Um, you know, discipline and the fitness, you know, things of that nature. But, you know, those are the main characteristics um, for me. And, yeah. and you bring up a good point there, too, uh, about like letting others into your relationship, no matter what the relationship is, it's mm -hmm. like, you're opening the door of their traumas and their insecurities and their issues mm -hmm. to then be welcomed into yours, mm -hmm. which is tough. Like that can affect your business, that can affect your dating relationship. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure, you, just how you're picky about your mentors that are around you. Mm -hmm. You gotta be picky about those friends that are involved in your relationship. Mm -hmm. You gotta be picky about what you expose them to because mm -hmm. not everybody's gonna forgive mm -hmm. as fast as those two partners mm -hmm. will. And, and they're not. And then always, they don't forget. Yeah, they don't forget, the and they're not. They're not seeing the good stuff. You rarely go back and rave on them. Exactly. Like, you know, you're only talking about the bad stuff. And again, I think there's important pieces of friendships. Like I have my boys, and when I'm going through it, like you know, I'll talk to my boys. I think that's super important. But I'm not yeah. always bringing my partner's business into um, other people's rooms. I, yeah. I just don't think that's important. There's a line. There's a line. Yeah. And. Um, you know, one more thing that I'll add, which is a little bit of polarizing, I think, in today's world is like, I, as a alpha male, like I, I, I want my partner to be willing to be led. Yeah. You know, I want to be the leader in my you talk house, about this in my relationship, <laughs> and I think a lot of times, like Western culture, is really driven women to hate men. Oh uh, yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that that's bad, but there's definitely a lot of beta males out there that don't deserve to be a leader. For so sure. I, I recognize that and I empathize for that. But if a man is showing up and uh, respects himself and respects you and shows up every day as an alpha man and gets the job done and can lead and support you and the family, um, I think that's super important. And, um, you know, that's what I look for in a partner. I don't need, you know, an argumentative partner. I need a collaborative, a collaborative partner. Yeah. You know? So. Right. And yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was at a I was at a wedding last night, and they're a beautiful couple. And in his vows, he said to his future wife, he said, "I promise to provide and protect you." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so beautiful because, I mean, I to me that's what an alpha male does, right? Mm -hmm. He will provide and protect you, and that's when a woman will feel safe to submit to you. Like, not submit, just, you know, sure. do whatever, sure. but, like, submit and let you lead yeah. and be, like, the CEO of the family, and she's more like the COO, is mm -hmm. how I look at it, more of the operations, mm -hmm. you know, with the kids running the home, mm -hmm. but to me, the male in the relationship is the leader. Yeah. And we talk about that all the time, because I feel like I have a hard time finding a male that I want to lead mm -hmm. me because as a woman, you want someone better, faster, stronger, better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that I'm so great, mm -hmm. but it's going to take someone special. Because sure. I mean, I don't, I don't want to have children with someone if they can't yeah. provide for a family. 100%. And that's why I've never had children because for me, I don't want to outside of marriage. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I would never have children unless I knew that my partner 
could provide for our family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, times get hard. Mm-hmm. So, someone could lose their job mm-hmm. or something could happen. Your finances aren't always going to be perfect, mm-hmm. but it's someone that has like the drive mm-hmm. and motivation. And we know together, no matter what, you gonna figure it out. We're going to figure this shit out together. Yeah. 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 That's healthy. So, but I also feel like I, I ha- also have a problem with hi- being really, independent Uh, he sees this (laughs) all the time even in our business relationship for sure so there is kind of like this female movement Mm -hmm. i feel like where we're and i don't think we're not saying anything negative about it it's just like you're bringing up good points i'm just like i wonder for you like both of you guys in your dating experiences is it hard to find a woman that wants to be led like are they because I know I, even myself, I can be like feisty mm-hmm. and yeah. push back. I think you both bring it up in the right way where it's like you ask the question correctly and you said it correctly. Where I think the the Western culture is is set up right now mm-hmm. to hate men. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, a, I feel that. So. When you said that, yeah. I feel that. I feel, like, so. I feel like even I, I see that message happening in my own life like yeah. just go get your own money go be alone <laughs> go do self-love mm-hmm. sit at home with your cat and wear a face mask yeah. and it'll all work out fine mm-hmm. and I'm like great I'm gonna be 50 crying myself to exactly. sleep every night mm-hmm. because I didn't build a family and a home and I think the, I, the narrative's not good it's not and that with a narrative not being good I think people are very quick to demonize people for mm-hmm. mistakes mm-hmm rather than the idea that people are growing, mm-hmm. people are learning. 100%. And it's a process, it's a ride, it's a journey. Yeah. And you're not gonna be perfect every day. Correct. Uh, and there's another thing too, I, I, again, I feel like you kind of say it without saying it. It's like, you know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. Right. Yeah. So until you make that mistake, mm-hmm. yes, it, there may be casualties to that war at life. Mm-hmm. And some people may feel it a little bit differently than others, mm-hmm. but that doesn't make you the dang the devil. You know, it makes you someone who was wrong. Hundred percent. And you owe an apology, or yeah. you you got to fix it, or grow, or become better, mm-hmm. and go on that journey. Yeah. But I do think like Western culture is setting it up, where men right now are just living in this space of like, mm-hmm. I fucking hate you. <laughs> well, and, and there's so many caveats to this, right? Yeah. And so it is hard. I, yeah. I think yeah. The answer to your question, it's, it is hard. It's it's hard, and, and, and like I said, it's it's a lot of caveats. Like, I, I'm all about empowering women. Right. Yeah. Love women. Like, absolutely. I can't live without them. Yeah. But like, at the same time, you know, in this Western culture, they have, I'll say the word, tricked women into thinking they don't need men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think that's true. And I'm just being completely honest. That's what you guys wanted. So. Yeah. But it goes just, both ways. Sometimes there's some men right now being tricked that they think they don't need women. Of course, and that's yeah. where it starts. Like, there's yes. a lot of beta males out here that think they're women. I, <laughs> like, yeah. To really, oh, to really, let's talk about that. Yeah, no, it, it's about it. it's fair. And, and both in of you. order for a woman to be submissive, you got to be a leader. Mm-hmm. Let's, sure. let's not forget that. And that's financially. That's protecting. Yep. That's that's emotionally. Right. That's mentally. Like, yep. there's uh, areas of leadership that you have to step up and lead in. And like you said, you're a high value woman. You have self-respect for yourself. You show up for yourself, right? And so when picking a partner, like of course you're not gonna pick a guy who's a slob, who doesn't show up to for himself. How's he How's he gonna show up for you if he's not showing up for himself, right? Absolutely. And um, <laughs> I have one other thing is like, like I said, I'm always gonna empower women mm-hmm. for sure. But I think we live in a culture now, it's like where it's, it's teaching women to, that they don't need men and that they should go out there and they should have their own, you know, run their own business and have their own families and do all this stuff and take it all on their shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, when in reality, like if you're going to be a slave to all those things, but not submit to your husband, like where's that incongruence at? Yeah. You know, it's like you, you, you'll submit to all these things like your job or your business or, you know, whatever the case may be, but you won't submit to a leader. Your husband is, it's, it's an incongruence there for me. And I could bring it, I want to bring it back to something you said on the beginning of the episode. It's about finding the balance. Mm-hmm. You said that at the beginning of the episode, mm-hmm. you help people find the balance of, of being that data driven personal mm-hmm. trainer. It, it seems like almost at this point, you're a life coach, baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're adding, you are adding high value. And I mean, again, think very highly of like the information you're putting out there, the way in which this is going to reach the audience. But Truly, it, it a lot of that does show up. It's the balance stuff, you know. Y- you have to be able to balance it all mm-hmm. because I don't think it's one man or woman's responsibility to do it all alone. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't care if you like, 
he, she, they, them, this, that, mm -hmm. what, whatever you do like, mm -hmm. it's a matter of partnership. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of being fair and of even. And that's not every day it's going to be 50-50. Mm -hmm. Some days it's 60-40. Mm -hmm. Some days it's 70-30. But just fight to get back and get even and be fair to the other person. And be like, hey, you had my back those other yeah. two days. Yeah. Let me show up for you a little bit more. Yeah. Take some time off. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we need that partnership because there's so much going on in life like yeah. trying to provide an income both work out you want to have kids mm -hmm. like no one can do this all alone it's okay? impossible like sometimes, <laughs> you're not meant to do it no. yeah. <laughs> yeah sometimes i'm like doing my laundry and i'm like crying because i'm like look i worked so many hours this it'd be nice if someone just like cooked me a meal tonight i'm like this is something's not right here yeah. and i don't even have kids so <laughs> And I mean, it's it's not even just saying that like you have kids and like the feminine is like the only one taking care of them and then the man's out working. It's like partnership and everything, mm -hmm. right? Like if my husband came to me and he was like, my cup's 20% full, or I only have 20% yep. today, I'd be like, don't worry, I got the other 80%, you yeah. know? And, and I'll add to that, I think in the partnership, it's the thing that really separates it is like the attitude that you bring to it of like wanting to. Yeah. Right. I want to go out of my way to do this. I want to bust my tail for my wife. Same with the, the, the wife or our partner. It's like, I want to take care of and make sure my husband's happy. And it's a I decision think every it's day. It's a decision and, and there's, it's, you know, different partners, you gotta find pride in that, right? Like I, I like find joy and the sacrifice that I have to make for my partner. Oh, and yeah. I think um, not everybody has that, that viewpoint anymore. It's like, well, why should I do this? What did you do for me? And that's just very unhealthy in a relationship. It's like, you're only, that's unconditional. Yeah. Like true conditional love, I'm doing this despite anything else because I actually love you and I actually care about you and I actually want to see the best in you. And so I'm willing to go make the sacrifices that I need to make to better your life over mine. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even want to verb it well, any other way. That's so good. I mean, <laughs> I really think the right person will like motivate you to show up as an even better version of yourself sure. like there's even been people i've dated that were like so inspiring to yeah. me mm -hmm. that i started pushing harder at my own life because i was like wow look at what this person's doing Just like as you're around them yeah because i was around them i was like i can step it up further with what i'm doing and that's like i i want to be with a man who inspires me and motivates me and within that partnership yeah. you know then and i can't see like what you're saying i can't see you with anyone that wouldn't be that way so y'all are bringing up some some good thoughtful stuff but i want some juicy shit like what's, <laughs> what's your uh what's your what's your worst date i want well, your worst dating story because uh, like there's got I, like, again this is like you you're motivated for a reason like mm -hmm. there's got to be something that was like this this traumatic thing i was like i'm good yeah <laughs> uh yeah i probably should be careful how I was <laughs> <laughs> um I, I, sh the first thing that comes to mind is like um, I was catfished one time Ooh. and I want to be respectful, but there's a disrespect in like portraying someone you're not, someone you're not, <laughs> someone you're not. And so I remember it, <laughs> I remember it vividly. I was like, wow. And like, I just, I just got catfished, but I'll be honest. Like, I, you know, I had a serious girlfriend for, you know, an extended amount of time sure. post college. And so that was like my only like legit you know, girlfriend, awesome. um, for the most part, I've kind of dated here and there, but, um, I think that what apprehended or caused the relationship not to work is myself. And like I was talking about, like there were some things that I needed to work on. Um, and so I've been constantly growing myself to kind of fill these voids, um, especially around like the emotional aspect. I feel like, um, you know, I just grew up like a very like emotionless man, which is like not attractive to emotion filled women. Sure. And so I've been, even with like the posting stuff, it's like trying to show more emotion and opening that layer of my heart to really receive um, and make that actual genuine connection. And so, like I said, I'm like slowly starting to open the door um, to that world as I start to, you know, have that inner healing of myself. And so nothing like super, super duper. I hear juicy. you. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's a journey. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's still something that you were like sitting in that moment. You're like, I'm being catfished. Like oh, that third eye, like <laughs> yeah. that, that bird's eye view as you're sitting yeah. in that moment. Like that's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm I sure. Was, I was, I was mad. I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, I want to be rude, but like, oh, it's, are you, so are you saying? Yeah. It was like bad. Like it was like indistinguishable, you know, sometimes yeah. you're like, oof, you know, but this was like, whoa. And those moments too, it makes you realize like, what? 
in the world would motivate somebody to want to do that? It's not like they're not going to get caught. For sure. <laughs> for sure. And like, also it's again, like, cause they still wanted to meet up with I you. Yeah. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah. Like, yeah. and like, has this ever worked? Yes. Like reaffirm uh, like what you're doing. <laughs> maybe they were, they were trying to get on that show. That yeah. Fish show. <laughs> I, maybe I don't know. but I, li- I like I love what you were talking about in terms of your emotional intelligence yeah. as a man that's so beautiful that you're so self-aware about that because I mean I've done I've tried to understand the difference between men and women so many times because I do think we function in so many different ways have you ever heard of that book like why men are from Mars and mm-hmm. women are from Venus I've heard of it never. Oh my God. I I think it was written like 20 years ago. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. The only thing I got out of it is we're from two fucking different planets, (laughs) you know, but there is, we do like communicate in such different ways where women can be like so emotional and so clingy. And then I'm just talking for myself, you know, like I know I can be a ball of emotions. Mm -hmm. And then with guys I'm dating, I'm like, why am I not? We just function so different, Very different. Very and we have different. to understand that, you know. No, it doesn't make you wrong either. Yeah, like it doesn't. It's I think those are like journey things, yeah. journey moments. Well, being able to receive love mm-hmm. too—that's not an easy thing. That's no. you hit the nail on the head with that one, and that's you know really what I'm working on is like just receiving. Yeah, um, yeah. I feel like I have to go do it all myself, um, and I think that closes a lot of doors to a lot of good things, like in my relationships, in business in life is that not the willingness to receive and i think um that's just super important and that's funny you brought that up that's something i'm definitely (laughs) yeah (laughs) well i think sometimes when you let go a little bit not not doing the work but when you let go a little and soften a little like good things come to Mm -hmm. you you know Mm -hmm. and we we can receive those things in that moment but it's hard when you're so disciplined Mm -hmm. to let go and accept that i think you know yeah i mean i think as men we're inherently one of to be like in control of all things. Yes. I think there is time to, you know, release and, and um, you know, receive that love for sure. I, th- I think too, it's like, I just want to really protect the idea that you run a business. You are giving out some really good jewels here. Bro. I'm like, uh, I'm like, ready. I'm serious. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like in like five years from now, I'm yeah. literally going to go to a TED talk. Uh, uh, 100%, and I'm 100%. like, I was your number one. <laughs> like, we'll run this back in five years. It'd be fun to see where we're both at. I want to definitely protect it because you, y- People are getting some good stuff out of this episode one, but like even me, like mm-hmm. just sitting here being a co-host right? with you, He's like so I'm getting inspiring. great stuff. Yeah, um, I just want to like allude to that. It's like this is just coming just from myself and my personal experience, sure. all with love. Yeah, like, right. I, but you can feel it. Like we're we're seeing love. it and yeah. we feel it. It's just, it's just I hope love. the audience does as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I'm not saying this this way or the highway. Or you have to do this. This is just yeah. my experience. This is where I'm at in life. Mm-hmm. Things could be different in five years, but this is the viewpoint that I'm viewing in life right now. And um, I think authenticity and ingenuity is um, something I value a lot. And like, if I, this is just, what, you're gonna get what you get. What I say is what you're gonna get. Sure. And, and, and so I just, you know, to everybody out there, like I have like some polarizing opinions and you know, I think it should be this way or that way. Like that's your life. And that's the beauty of life is that you get to construct it any way you would like. Absolutely. This is just how I'm constructing my life. And I think um, the more that we're genuine, authentic to ourselves, we can t- attract people that share those same values. And that's beautiful. And yeah. we're all uh, welcome to our own opinions. That's that's the beauty of um, of life. Well, I want to make, sh- make sure too, we give you that safe stage to ask just our, our true question, we want to make sure everybody <laughs> has a mm-hmm. safe stage to answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you feel or what has been brought to your attention or what would you like to clarify on of like, what's your biggest misconception about you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny because I was teed up for this one. So I, uh, <laughs> I asked one of my one of my homegirls. So I asked a couple of them. They all had the same response. I love it. I love it. I love oh, this. Where is she at? <laughs> said, she said, to be honest, I think that people assume you're a typical player, Austin douche guy, Yeah. if you know what I mean. <laughs> but in reality, you're one of the most intentional and genuine friends I've ever had. So That's, That's awesome. so beautiful. Um, That's very sweet. I think yeah. that just the confidence and the aura that I give off when I walk into the room, I'm very like confident in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be a little demeaning, for lack of better words, to, to the people around me. But at the end of the day, like, um, I, I, I love... I love hard and I care nothing but the best for people and I want nothing for the best of people. And I, hear like, you. I think um, it's important to, you know, have a backbone and, and you know, be secure in what you believe. But at, at the end of the day, like, um, 
you know, I just want to love hard. And so <laughs> a lot of misconceptions when people first meet me, it's like, you know, I'm just a typical Austin douche. But take some time to get to know me. You got some light skin struggles, my yeah. man. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, like, okay, that, I'm thinking that too, though, because I'm like, okay, yeah, like Brian's like a good looking guy. It yeah. makes sense with like the Austin dating scene that people would be like perceiving you that way. I actually had one of my girlfriends. She was like, do you know this guy? And it was you. I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, she was like, I found him. He's cute. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Shoot your shot. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'll be backing you up the whole way. <laughs> yeah, you. for sure. For sure. Um, I guess we'll, we'll close it out. Um, but before we close it out, um, we want people to be able to follow like the great content you're putting out. Yes. Um, where can people stalk your social stuff on yeah. Instagram? Are the you most on respectful TikTok? stalking? We please. say respectful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, stalk on. Hit <laughs> that follow. Hit heart on every yeah. video. Yeah. Uh, it's Brian Pollard Fitness, and that's okay. Brian with a Y, B R Y A N Pollard Fitness, um, and that's across the board. Um, Are you on Instagram. TikTok? I'm on TikTok as okay. well. Awesome. Um, I'm trying to learn TikTok. I feel like I'm like a millennial that still doesn't know. It's what scary. To do. It's like, do we invest time in TikTok now? Yes. They just got banned. <laughs> like, what's the what's the story right it's now? It's hard. It's hard, and I'm definitely not on top of TikTok as I should be. I think that's a great platform to get your word out. Like, you can go from zero views to a million views just on one video. For sure. Like Instagram works more in an algorithm. Yeah. So, um, I think it's a great tool. I haven't quite figured it <laughs> figured it out but yeah. um it's a lot also a lot of good information on tiktok oh yeah, yeah. people want to ban it and i think there's probably some good reason around like why why <laughs> yeah. um but i don't know if a complete ban is a great thing because there is a lot of good information and resource out there but that's probably a conversation for another day <laughs> yeah i agree well we want to make sure everybody comes back to the next episode it was a pleasure to have you man awesome. thank you guys. brian you're a dope dude Cass. thank you so much for aligning to somebody in your network i know i'm like to come. i feel like i'm like <laughs> fan girl over here on this one too i'm like the wisdom you were spitting out i was like this is so cool yeah like, you're, you're just solid so dude. authentically yourself and that's what i love and appreciate about you and the fact that you're sharing that with the world your routines and your habits is just so inspiring yep. and so then we always close this out like the cheesiest way ever <laughs> come back next week because you know what's going down, down. <laughs> in the lobby yeah, that's great. Woo! That was so good. Yeah, like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was just.